are helpless in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will go unto the altar of God. To God who gives joy to my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves, that we might be found worthy to offer the sacrifice of Holy Mass. And now please make an examination of conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God, we will now recite the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Indeed, the Word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. And the Word became flesh, and man made his dwelling among us, and we saw his glory, the glory as the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord our God, you speak through Christ, who speaks through us. Nourish us with your word and sacraments. Cause us to bring forth fruit worthy of your labor. And keep us fit for the coming harvest. 
We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. On this, the 15th Sunday in the Ordinary Time, the first reading is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens and rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth my word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual for today is taken from the first letter of Peter as well as the Gospel of Luke. You have been born anew, not from perishable, but from imperishable seed, through the living and abiding word of God. Rather blessed are those who hear the word God and observe it. The second reading for today is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not nothing as compared to the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to fertility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we await for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The seed is the word of God which is now at work in you who believe. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. Cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him, and he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, a sower went out to sea, and as he sowed the seed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns. And the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit. A hundred, or sixty, or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, 
Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear but they do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear but do not understand. You shall indeed look but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and be converted, and I will heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, Many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sowed on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. And the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy. But he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word. But then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. This is the gospel of the Lord. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by now, by all of us now and forever. Amen. A sower went out to sow. Words taken from today's gospel, according to St. Matthew, chapter 13, verse 3. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus. The parable of the sower is a teaching that Jesus taught and is found in the three synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It is the story of a sower who sowed seed indiscriminately. One of the interesting verses in this story is when Jesus is approached by the apostles and asked, why he taught in parables. To this Jesus replies, because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. He goes on to say, this is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear 
but do not listen or understand. Jesus then declares that the seed is but of God. What a revelation it must have been for those who first saw, heard, and understood in a deeper spiritual context revealed during his ministry. The term word is defined as a single, distinct, meaningful element of speech or writing. You know words have power. They can cause extreme pain or anger, as well as deep love and compassion. A word can be spoken or written. We could speak for hours on the power of the spoken word, which has been expressed throughout the history of mankind by great spiritual teachers, philosophers, professors, and statesmen. There is in Holy Scripture a sacredness of the Word of God. For example, to an Orthodox Jew, they can either speak the name of God or even touch the written name of God using their own hand while reading from the Torah or the sacred scroll. They must use a Jewish stylus known as a yod which is translated in Yiddish to hand. Look at the written words found in Holy Scripture, which are referred to as the Word of God. From Genesis to Revelation, from the Torah, the teachings of the prophets, John the Baptist, the evangelists who recorded the words of Jesus. To St. Paul and other early Christian writers, all these words we are taught in Catechism comes from the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and is meant for our own sanctification. Think of our Lord when he declared his mission at the age of 30, when he read in the local synagogue in Nazareth from the teachings of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me. Think of the power of his teachings in his words as found in the Gospels, from the Beatitudes in Matthew to the high priestly prayer found in John. Think of the very power of his word to heal the sick and even raise the dead. Afetha, be thou open were words that our Lord spoke when he cured a deaf man as found in the Gospel of Mark. Or, Talitha, Kumi, or, young girl, I say to you, arise, when our Lord raised Jairus' daughter from the dead as found also in the Gospel of Mark. Think of the power of salvation as found in the words of our Lord at his own crucifixion. Father, forgive them. It is finished. And into your hands I commit my spirit. Today in our troubled world, we search for words that can enlighten and uplift individuals. And society as a whole toward a greater good. St. John begins his gospel account by saying, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Do you see that the sower in today's parable is none other than Jesus Christ, the Word that became flesh St. John, toward the end of his life, was sent in exile to the island of Patmos, where he wrote the final account of the life and ministry of Jesus. Whereas the Gospels written by Matthew, Mark, and Luke were addressed to the Jewish, the Roman, and the Greek world, they tell more of what Jesus did. But in John's Gospel, he tells more of what Jesus said. 
John wrote his gospel account based on the power of the word of Jesus, he himself being the word. And Jesus reflected the true transparency into the understanding of the mind of God. I believe that the key to the parable of the sower is not the casting of the seed, but rather where the seed landed. I believe that there is a direct correlation between where the seed landed and the condition of one's own individual soul. First, it should be said that all seeds that were sown were good. Now let us look at where these seeds landed. The first seed was thrown on a well-packed road. The second, thrown on a rock. The third, among thorns and weeds. And finally, the fourth, landing on good and fertile soil. I would say that the good seed which was sown on the road represents individuals who have been hardened by life, like a road well-traveled. The seed finds no softness in the soil to take root. So as Jesus teaches, the evil one, in contrary to God's teachings, takes that seed away. The second seed, which landed on a rock, represents individuals who lack a spiritual foundation to allow the good seed to take root and germinate. I think of the cynics, the atheists, and the secular humanists who all deny the existence of God or have no need of God or a higher power in their life. The third seed that fell among the thorns are those individuals who live solely in today's physical world. To these individuals, as Jesus teaches, are those who go their way after hearing the word and are choked by the care and riches and pleasures of life. I think of all those who have become enslaved to their own passions, greeds, greed and excesses. But thanks be to God that some seed falls on fertile soil. Anyone who has ever planted seed in a garden knows that the soil first needs to be prepared and cultivated before planting. It is in this fertile ground of the soul that the Word of God takes place, germinates, and grows. During this germination, the plant which has received the life-giving power of the seed needs to be watered and protected from that which would seek to overcome, overtake, or destroy the fruit of that seed. The seed that our Lord Jesus Christ has sown through his good news has been placed in our lives. Whenever we hear the word of God, read or preached, it is good seed. It is the seed that gives life. But today, as we contemplate on the meaning of this parable, the question is asked of all of us, what type of soil do you have in reference to the Word of God? Do you allow the Word of God to take root in your lives and grow? Does the Word of God find depth in your soul to transform you from your old self into a rebirth, into a new self? Does the Word of God grow strongly even among the weeds and the brambles of life? To you, my dear brothers and sisters, I pray that the Word of God may grow in all of us stronger each day. For we all have been given the knowledge of the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. God sent His Son Jesus to speak to us on his behalf. In his words found in the gospel, we are taught on how we are to live and how we are to treat one another. 
May all of us who call ourselves disciples of the Lord possess the wisdom to see, the ears to hear, and the heart to comprehend the good news of Jesus. May he give unto us the seed that bears the fruit which in the end glorifies our Heavenly Father. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. For everything created by God is good, and nothing is to be rejected when received with thanksgiving, for it is made holy by the invocation of God in prayer.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we set bread and wine before you as a sign that we are yours and that our love for you is real. Transform us by the power of your word to rejoice in our new life, to serve our brothers and sisters, and to praise your holy name. We ask all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through his cross and resurrection, he freed us from sin and death and called us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people set apart. Everywhere we proclaim your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. Therefore, we honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as the Word of God. And we join with the voices of the angels and archangels and all the saints and the entire church. And we lift our praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord, we pray for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, for the homeless and the hungry, for the unemployed and all those who will die today. We pray for all victims of the COVID-19. We pray for all abused, neglected children in our world, for all victims of violence, both here and abroad for all those that serve in our armed forces and all present whose faith and devotion are known to you for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own for their hope of salvation and deliverance and who freely choose to serve you the living eternal and true god we join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of mary the glorious virgin mother of our lord and god jesus christ also your blessed apostles and martyrs and confessors together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations but especially of our nation who lived suffered and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom may the remembrance of these praise worthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example making us worthy of your grace and love through the same jesus christ our lord amen we ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we might be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and to make it pleasing to yourself, so that it might be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
the day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love draw them to himself make them joyful and save them he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people at that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family our savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you his almighty father giving thanks to you he blessed it broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat it for this is my body which is given for you In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, All of you take and drink of this, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you a holy sacrifice in immaculate host. We humbly ask your almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar and to the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all the rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy. So pardon and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints who shed their blood for their, your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create sanctify, revive, and bless, and freely give us all these good things through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. forever and ever Amen. let us pray instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example we say with confidence our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from it, all evils, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew, and all the saints grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same. Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament through your loving kindness, may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our Master, Saving Master, awaken in all of us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing through this communion. Make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces that he had run, rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen.
not by bread alone does man live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Word of God, you are the bread of life that comes forth from the Most High to nourish our starved souls. May we hunger for you and be forever sad in his spine. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. Be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and all those for whom I have offered it through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found a life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe. But only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him be empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God, the Word. became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters, I welcome you um, during this Holy Mass as we offer prayers for one another. I pray that the good Lord might watch over us and over our loved ones and bless us day by day as we learn more and more of Him. Today, let us conclude with the offering of prayer for our church, for one another, for our loved ones, and then for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed. May God bless you, and God be with all of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. 
May perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.